are the 1996 Bulls, the greatest basketball team of all time. I don't know. Let's check it out. Why this Bulls team? Weirdly, that's a question I anticipate people asking. The Between the 1990-91 nice. season and the 97-98 season, mm -mm. the Chicago Bulls won six championships behind the efforts of Michael Jordan, oh, look at Grant. Scottie Pippen, and head coach Phil Jackson. Each was punctuated with immortal, memorable scenes. A crying Jordan holding his first trophy. <laughs> this is crying, Jordan. A shrug. A flu. And more than one iconic series icing shot. 96? team and not another? No, 96, they came, like, Jordan came out busted. I, I think it was their greatest record they had, right? I think they had, I think they were 72 and 10, I think. And then, them boys just was sweeping everybody. I don't know. They got Michael Scotty. Occasionally sort out those who submit the 96 Bulls into this discussion. Michael Scotty no feel? they say. The 91 and 92 Bulls were way better. Really? Michael and Scotty were younger, the no. league was more competitive, and no. they had way more depth on the front. Everybody's line. was mature. Yeah, Everybody's mature. The 96 mature in 96. Bulls record is impressive, but the league had expanded. New teams had diluted the talent pool and created a vacuum. Mm. For you to say that the 96 Bulls are the best just goes to show that you don't really know what you're talking about. What? You probably love Patrick Beverly, don't you? You filthy casual. <laughs> and those are some valid <laughs> That's a points. To say that. Don't buy... Michael and Scotty were young. Oh my god. God. The league was Michael. Just and me, those are some valid points. Just let me see how he Michael and Scotty were, he's gliding through the air. Oh the God. league was more competitive. And those teams did not suffer from the same dearth of talent in their big men that the 96 squad did. Mm. So, here's the facts. They went 72 and 10. Yeah. The best record to that point in NBA history. Yeah. And the first And they and they won the title. Warriors y'all um Ooh, you almost had it in over 70 games their 87 13 overall <sighs> record is the highest winning percentage of any team ever they paced the field in nearly every hold on somebody just told me that celtics they had the best the best regular season plus postseason record but these boys was 87 and 13 it was 15 to 3 in the playoffs oh yeah statistic. it's definitely them and still have the highest net rating for a single season ever they got the best player, the best Their side kick. Consisted of Hall of Famers Michael Jordan, oh, Scottie yeah. oh. Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. Oh yeah. Tony Kukoc came off the bench as one of the best sixth men of all time. Best sixth men of all. Was a defensive Ooh. specialist. Oh my God! Just look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that roster! Oh no! Look at that roster! You got Jordan, Pippen. You got the greatest player of all time, the greatest side kick of all time. You got the greatest third man of all time. Tony Kukoc is out here stretching the floor. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about Luke Longy, but Ron Harper getting that thing. <laughs> I used to take, I used to play basketball with Luke Longy on, on one of them old games. I just take, him, I just take him out, huh? I guess that's like the Warriors when they got like uh, uh Kevon Looney in the game or something, or JaVale McGee at center. Just take him out, bro. Stop playing. Just a point guard. Huh? Harper in that thing, Steve Curry in that thing. Oh yeah. Provided offense off the bench. I don't know who these other two are. Judd Butcher. And Bill Judd Butcher. In the middle. Randy. I don't Why know not use a too. different Bulls team? Because by nearly every metric that we use to measure teams, this team is not only clearly the best Chicago Bulls team ever. Clearly. It is the greatest NBA team ever. Yeah. They won more games than yeah. any other champion has ever won. That alone should count for something. Yeah. The entire goal of the sport is to, to win, win games and win the championship. That's the whole point. And the Bulls did it better than anyone. Their resume is immaculate. 72 and 10 and the chip, yeah. But Michael Jordan was the league MVP and leading scorer. Ooh. Dennis Rodman won the rebounding title. Give me no bullets. Phil Jackson won no, coach of the year. That's knowing your role. Jerry Krause won executive of the year. Tony Kukoc won sixth man of the year. What? Michael oh, no, I ain't know that one. And Dennis made first team. No, I ain't know that one right here. Kukoc was sixth man of the year. Oh, no, I thought he was a starter. Who was Phil starting? Jackson won coach of the year. Jerry Krause won executive of the year. Tony Kukoc won sixth man of the year. Ooh. Mike, Scotty, and Dennis made first team all defense. Mess out of here. And Michael and Scotty were both named to first team all NBA. No matter where you look on this team, <clears throat> all you find are the hallmarks of excellence. Where else do you start than with the greatest basketball player of all time, 
Michael Jordan. Sure, he was younger in 91 and 92. Nah, he was more you can make the argument that he was a better individual talent then. Nah, but give more me season. this Michael over the rest. Give me his... After a nearly two year hiatus to pursue a dream oh of professional gosh. baseball, he came back. Jordan returned hungry. as a more mature, more evolved player. He hungry he too. He fly quite as high as he used to, but he doesn't need to. He's smarter than he's ever been. He picks his spots and knows exactly how to get there. He's still the most lethal scorer in the league, still the nightmarish amalgamation of quickness, <clears throat> strength, touch, speed, shooting, and know-how. His drives to the basket still draw the breath of every spectator across the globe. This he dude is Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> kicking them the ball when they get open or as he gets doubled. He still I don't know why they didn't call him the claw. havoc on the defensive end and does so with zeal. Mm. He doesn't take nights off and he doesn't get tired. He led the league in minutes and played in all of Chicago's 100 games that season. Oh, as I have said before, a basketball in Michael Jordan's hand is the defining image of the sport. It no, feels like they were made for each other. No low management. Huh? The fact that they were able to intersect. He was the best offensive player in the game, able to score seemingly at will from everywhere on the court, had developed into a capable and willing passer, mm. defended at one of the highest levels Ooh, in the league. Who has he? A mess and, out of here. Dare I say it, took nearly every matchup personally. <laughs> and right I took alongside that personally. him, as he was for every championship campaign in Bulls history, was Scottie Pippen. Often cited as the greatest sidekick in basketball and perhaps all of sports, of all time. the moniker should carry no insult when applied to Pippen. The 6'7 forward with the 7'3 wingspan from Central Arkansas made it all work and goes down as arguably the most complete basketball player of the 1990s. It sound like LeBron. He filled in the blanks, as Chuck Daly once said. With that's why that's why they don't want it. It's, it's sort of like having Jordan or LeBron to lead the team. If you want one player... One player, LeBron will elevate your team to championship contender with just one player. But it's a team sport. He gonna need a which he gonna need his sidekick to be hitting the shots. And if your sidekick is the one hitting the shots and not taking all the credit, he gonna be volatile. You can't make that last like this man Jordan did. He repeat the three peat. That's why LeBron's like, oh, oh, he's up. If he gets somebody to hit it. He gets somebody to hit the shot. Okay, he good. But in the next year, oh, I don't want to play with him no more. I ain't getting the credit I deserve. And Passing, look. scoring, ball handling, defense, Give me joy. confidence, and leadership. Whatever the team needed, Scotty provided. Okay. To his own individual credit, during Jordan's first year playing baseball, Pippen finished third in MVP voting, and Ooh. the Bulls were competing Ooh, as that's, legitimate that's the That's the most disrespectful dunk. That's the most disrespectful dunk uh, uh, in the whole league of all time, right there. To his own individual. Look at that dunk right there. During Jordan's first year playing baseball, you gotta be the, you gotta be the second fielder. Look at that dunk. Look at that dunk. Get, get off me. Get off me. Get off me. You two. And damn. The following season, <laughs> again without Jordan, <laughs> Pippen led the Bulls in every major statistical category. By '96, mm. Pippen had settled comfortably into an average of 20 points, six assists, and six rebounds a night. Okay. And did I forget to mention that Pippen might well be the best perimeter defender in NBA history? Mm. Shoot. Well, Scotty Pippen might well be the best perimeter defender in NBA history. That's tough. He big with Pippen, them quick hands, quick feet. was often given the responsibility of guarding the opposing team's best scorer, a fate similar to being sentenced to Alcatraz. Scotty was made to play defense and did it with every inch and ounce of his body. Mm. On that end of the floor, he was nearly as destructive as Jordan was on offense. Yes, it's true that Scotty succeeded next to Jordan. But it's just as true that Jordan only succeeded next to Pippen. It's they a one formed two, a perfect it's a one -two punch. Different in so many complementary ways. It like, fit like a glove, you know what I'm saying? Where Michael's intense competitiveness led it was him like to like and criticize his teammates in order to get the most out of them. It is universally said that Pippen's presence was just as necessary. The yin to Jordan's yang, with his amicable demeanor and willingness to put his arm around teammates. It was his contributions and sacrifices, as much as anything, that put the mm. Chicago Bulls in position, night in and night out, to succeed. You cannot construct a more complimentary team player for nearly any roster or play style than Scottie Pippen. He was just the best. Rounding out the big three was the most enigmatic man in the show, 
Dennis Rodman. Dennis when Rodman wasn't even there the whole time. About the 1989 Pistons, I mentioned that the Pistons' Dennis Rodman was not the one with the hair or the tattoos or the relationship with actresses like Madonna and Carmen Electra. This version of Dennis Rodman is that guy. <laughs> As his life and career progressed into the 90s, Rodman's behavior became erratic. Really gonna kick the his reporter? personality? Eccentric. Mm. Following a less than stellar stint with the Spurs, the 34-year-old Rodman was traded to the Bulls in advance of the 95-96 season. Of note, Rodman was and is the best pound-for-pound -pound rebounder of all time. That's crazy. It's not an argument. He paced the league in boards with 14.9 a game. David Robinson was second with 12.2. Dennis Rodman averaged 22% more rebounds than David Robinson and couldn't have been more than an inch and a half taller than Michael Jordan. If you saw The Last Dance, you might remember a sequence where Dennis rambles about the different ways that the ball will fly off the rim based off of who's shooting, from where, and with what kind of spin. It's edited in a funny way that makes Dennis seem equal part savant and eccentric. But the thing is, that's the way his brain really works. Even going back to the 90s, there are accounts of Dennis watching replays and explaining that somehow, somewhere in his brain, there is a mechanism that can project predict and intuit angles and trajectories based off of the most imperceptible of variables. He studied tape not necessarily to discern how different teams handled pick and rolls, but to put to memory the way a Patrick Ewing finger roll behaves off the rim, or the exhaustive possibilities that a Gary Payton shot presents. That is one of the rare gifts and qualities that a GM is supposed to be able to do. The GM was supposed to be able to pick somebody out the crowd, out the out of out of the college ranks. You know what I'm saying? This is how you surround somebody who's great. This is how you build a team. You don't need the best player, the best superstar. You need the most complimentary player to your superstar and your superstar's um partner in crime. Okay? This is this is quality. This is this is Draymond Green. This is the Draymond Green effect right here. You know what I'm saying with him with, with Stephen Clay. This is the Iguodala effect right here. This is nice. This when is nice. training I camp like began with the Bulls, you, know Rodman you ain't got to be the one two rebound for Jordan and Pippen while they shot before practice, so as to commit their variables to memory. And don't forget, Rodman was still a pest of a defender. He was called the Worm for a reason. He could and did effectively guard centers despite giving up four or five inches. <clears throat> He He's could do entry passes, no stand his ground in the post, and outthink or outmuscle even the mess out of here. Era. Too strong. You might be tempted to call Rodman a one-dimensional player. And while it's true that he was never much of an offensive threat as a scorer or passer, I can't think of a better team to remedy those weaknesses they than the one it. with the greatest scorer of all time on. They don't need to. I got Jordan. Score? Fine. He doesn't need to. <laughs> he can commit himself to the things that he loves and that he's good at which is being an all-league defender and a game-changing, series-altering, morale-crushing rebounder. Hey, What's hey, it matter man. if a pitcher can only... Hey, man, don't worry about your weaknesses, dog. Focus on your strengths, man. You'll be one of the greatest of all time. For one pitch, if it's a 120-mile-an-hour fastball. <clears throat> and the rest of the Bulls were as decorated and as talented as you will find on an NBA roster. Tony Kukoc came off the bench as an overqualified reserve winning the sixth man of the year award and finishing the regular season as the team's third leading scorer. And who's the star? What, Ron Harper shooter, and what, Luke Longley? Terrific passer, and as a long, versatile 6'11 small forward, presented matchup problems at both ends. <clears throat> Ron Harper, the team's point guard, embraced the role of defensive specialist, this dude was offering up. no sanctuary for players deemed unworthy to be guarded by Jordan or Pippen. Steve Kerr came off the bench as a backup guard and helped space the floor and provide sparks of offense in his limited minutes thanks to the fact that he is still the most accurate three-point shooter in basketball That's history. That's tough. They complete. Yeah, okay. Bill Wennington and Luke Longley weren't stars at center, but they didn't really need to be. Rodman more than picked up their slack. Bro, that's what I'm saying. You big. Bro, catch the ball, finish. Like, what, what, what else I need you to do? Like we don't need the uh, offense to run through. You just catch the ball, finish. These man. teams from the past be big. That sacrifice center production in favor of more versatile perimeter players tend to project well into the modern game. 
At the same time, though, this lack of talented size does leave them ripe for critics who suggest that they couldn't stand a chance against a dominant center. Which line of thinking is correct? I don't know, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to the team that went 72-10 and 10 in a league with Hakeem Olajuwon, Ooh. Patrick Ewing, Ooh. David Robinson, Ooh. and Shaquille O'Neal. I don't know. Call it a hunch. Bro, why, why do you think the league goes small in the first place? <laughs> Why do you think the league goes small in the first place? Because Jordan and Pippen and, 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 and Luke Longley, not Luke Longley, Cool Coach, who else, Kerr, uh, Rodman, it was like, man, look, just get somebody in there to get got, got some good skills. You ain't got to be big. You ain't got to be a center. We, gonna, we don't change all that. This uh, 96 Bulls team, that's the reason why. That's why everybody want to be want to get the, get the best wing guard. They want to build a team around some wing and guards. You know what I'm saying? That's why. I also want to take so I'm gonna a go with that too. Talk about the mindset of this Bulls team. To do that, we have to talk about the Zen Master. Yeah. Zen There's some master. debate as to how important head coaches are to the success. Oh, of the you ain't had to do. You ain't had to There's do my man dirty like that. How... You ain't had to do my man Stan Van Gundy dirty like that. <laughs> This man has ruined, he ruined the magic. Goodness gracious, boy. God. Them boys beat LeBron, and then he got to the, he was supposed to beat the, he, he was supposed to beat Kobe and the Lakers. Dwight's supposed to have a ring right now. I bet you ain't know that. But, blame this man. He put Jameer Nelson How in the important game. head coaches are to the success of NBA teams, Ooh. but Phil Jackson is one of the ones who mattered. His unconventional approach to coaching centered on presence of mind and borrowed philosophies and techniques from everywhere, from the Sioux tribes to Zen Buddhism. <laughs> as much as he preached the tenets of the triangle offense, emphasizing spacing, taking what the defense gave you, and playing with intent, he imbued the Bulls with a sense of the moment. Today only happens once. You only get to play the game for so long, and teams like this don't come around often. Mm. With the oldest roster in the league, the Bulls took these lessons to heart, ran his system beautifully, and never found a moment that was bigger than they were. <clears throat> bang, this bang. team had the eye of the tiger. That's thanks to Phil Jackson. Those Bulls units. thanks to Michael Jordan. That's those Bulls units. Iconic the boy. Even the food chain. He was an apex predator. He had no rivals. Never found an equal. He competed and wanted to win to a fault. Nobody trained harder than he did. The legend of Michael Jordan is one of a man who never, not one time, got outworked. Never got outworked. And that outworked. work ethic was applied unilaterally to his teammates. They were berated and held to the highest standard of performance in professional sports by a pathologically competitive maniac. <clears throat> As a result, every member of the 96 Bulls was honed like a blade. Look at Jordan. You had to be a stone-cold competitor with ice in your veins to run with Jordan. You have to take that into Woo! account when talking about the greatest teams of all time. If teams take on Jordan out here like, yeah, I jump higher than you. I'm faster than you. I'm better than you. I'm stronger than my, I'm stronger than you. My team's better than you. My girls looks better than yours. <laughs> on the identity of their best player, My coach is more, my, my coach is smarter like than you. Any other. I can score more points than you. You can talk about matchups. I block your shot. I can defend better than you. All you want. This team goes into every game with a Michael Jordan mindset. They don't just expect to beat you. They don't just expect to win. They want to decimate you. Ooh, They're the like, alpha dog. Like no remorse. Constantly looking for challenges. Like waiting no. Waiting for somebody to return their gaze. Like no remorse. Like no. They want the fight. Like oh my As god, who's the biggest playoffs, baddest dog? Like let me go. Let me go up themselves. Against. That's crazy. They knew their 72 wins would be discounted if they didn't win the championship. As they proudly proclaimed. It don't mean a thing without the ring. <clears throat> See, that's what but I'm talking about. Talk about matchups and schemes. That's what I'm talking about. If you didn't win, what was the point? The whole point of the whole season is to win the whole thing. So if you didn't win, ain't no way you can be the best. Teams, we can do that too. Ain't no way, bro. First ain't question, no way. You, ain't no way. What the hell are you gonna do with Jordan? Once he'd reached this height of his powers, he was virtually unstoppable. Gary Payton had his moment against Jordan in the finals. A moment? And the insinuation that he could have changed the series had he guarded him sooner generated one of the defining memes of the last dance. And okay, let's say you do somehow slow down the best scorer to ever play basketball. 
Scotty Pippen was practically designed to pick up the slack and adjust on the fly. Yeah. Pick you up everything. Cannot stop yeah. Both. And Scotty is going to make you pay not just by himself, but by involving the rest of the team and acting as the new distribution hub of the offense. Nobody ran the triangle better than the Bulls, which meant that every player had to stay ready for their moment. The ball moved around, everybody got a chance, shooters consistently got clean looks, and it would only make it easier Ooh. for everyone else if the opponent focuses too much on Michael. Kukoc was a killer. Steve Kerr didn't miss. And even Mike himself was shooting over 40% from three this year. Ooh. The role players Ooh. fit perfectly alongside the stars. You got Kukoc and, and Steve Kerr. Shooters. To counter opposing strategies. So I guess today is like if you if you match him up with like them uh, like the 2017 Warriors, Steve Kerr would be like Steph. <laughs> Kukoc would be like Clay. Except imagine the Warriors, but the two best players are the wing players. Which is, who, who were the wing players on the Warriors? <laughs> Except the best players is like KD and Iguodala. Ooh. And the Ooh. defense? Ooh. There are five players on the NBA's all-defensive first Shaq. team, essentially representing the best five defenders in the league at their position. The Bulls had three of those five players. Mm. Plus, with Kukoc able to play in big lineups and Ron Harper standing six foot six, mm. the Bulls can the, switch the, practically the, the everything and offer an endless amount of versatility. That's underrated too. He's and six six at the one, bro. Premium centers, but way the back Bulls then were too. A top four team in rebounding, thanks to you know the best rebounder in the league, a precision offense with the sharpest of spearheads. A defensive squad that rivals any lineup in history and the versatility and switchability that modern teams would drool over. Mm. How can the Bulls be any more impressive? I don't know. I'll tell you how. At the end of the 1993 NBA Finals, Michael Jordan had led the Bulls to their third straight championship. A that was easy work. not accomplished since the 1960s. He had achieved worldwide fame and was being hailed as the greatest <clears throat> basketball player ever. And then, suddenly, he walked away. He plugged away in minor league baseball to varying degrees of success. Okay. And the Bulls tried to make sense of life after Jordan to varying degrees of success. Yeah, to take a mental break, man. It was a mental health year. After nearly two full years away from the game, Jordan returned for his second act, signaled with two simple words. I'm back. He played the final 17 games of the 95 regular season complete with a 55-point explosion in MSG and a game winner against the Atlanta Hawks. He looked good, but he didn't quite look like the Michael Jordan of old. His body wasn't in the same kind of shape. Uh, His shot didn't go down the way it used to. Uh, and he made lost. mistakes that made him look human. Uh, a 45. heretical label for his airness. That's because he was number 45, man. In the man. second round of the playoffs, for the first time in over half a decade, Michael Jordan lost. Defeated at the hands of Shaquille O'Neal's Orlando Magic in six games. Was that really Mike? The question was that really began Mike, almost instantly. The Bulls traded for Dennis Rodman. That guy's a head case, right? Are they desperate? Pippen had accrued extra miles while Jordan was gone. Ooh. How could his body hold up? And most importantly, was it possible that Michael Jordan could still be Michael Jordan? This was the bar had never been higher for an athlete. This was the something Michael to prove. Jordan yeah. was the standard. Oh, I he love was something to basketball. prove. Yeah. How could he walk away and come back nearly two years later, step into an almost completely new roster, and be expected not just to compete, not just to win, but to dominate in a way that was specific to him and his teams? In the Did they get these get back? questions. 96? Michael Jordan and the 1996 Chicago Bulls responded with the most successful season in professional basketball history. Yeah. 72 regular season wins and the championship. I, I don't think you can. What I is the greatest team of all time? I don't think you can. What's it look like? Who's on it? And how would you know that they're the greatest of all time? Look at the They'd probably the have the best sidekick ever. Mm -hmm. Someone who can do anything on a basketball court. Let's including completely neutralizing the opposing team's best player. They'd like to have the best rebounder since color television, another player who isn't afraid of anything and who can stop giants in their tracks. Mm -hmm. 
they would love it if their coach just so happened to be the most decorated man to hold a clipboard. Mm. And they'd be lucky to have, I don't know, the most accurate three-point shooter in history. Mm. The best sixth man in the league. Mm. A bulldog of a point guard. Mm. A roster full of toughened, capable, willing Ooh. players who have all been forged in the fire of their leader. It's that mindset. The greatest player who has ever competed in the sport of basketball. And you'd know that they were the greatest by their play. They'd elevate their games from competitions to performances. Spectators would leave awestruck, forever grateful to say that they saw this team. They were there. They witnessed history. This greatest of teams would look a whole lot like the 1996 Chicago Bulls. It was. Because that's exactly what they are. The greatest basketball team of all time. Yeah, I got I got to agree. I got to agree with that one.